So how, how's everybody doing today? Um, I'm going to have a Q&A at the end. So any questions you have, um, Icon is going to be helping me out, uh, put them in the chat, um, kind of on the side of the screen over here. So uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, I'm Steve, um, or Switcraft, um, S-W-I-T-T-C-R-A-F-T. <laughs> um, so yeah, what I do basically is um, I do customs. Uh, I've been doing it kind of from the perspective of a noob. You know, I've been in it for about a year, year and a half. Uh, uh, the big part, um, you know, what got me into it was just, um, I've been seeing the great artist alley you guys uh, have here in Icon. And I, I kind of got burnt out on drawing and wanted something more hands-on. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm 43, so I'm I'm the OG G1 generation. You know, I was seven when uh, Transformers came out. Uh, I have a seven, you know, seven year, eight year old now myself who's been deeply steeped in G1 uh, since uh, he was about three. So he's been transforming a Devastator since uh, he was probably four. Um, I'm also a Ghostbuster. Uh, I did prop building a little bit before I got into custom, so that's kind of how I leeway into it. So. That's my mug uh, dressed up uh, in, in my gear. Um, we do local, you know, uh, Ghostbuster franchise stuff. Uh, but my kind of niche I've got fallen into, uh, for better or worse, and maybe it's the, the fan art side from doing conventions, or maybe it's, uh, you know, just my love of nostalgia is I do a lot of pop culture customs. So it's my kind of hook is the pop culture custom creator. So that's kind of what I've fallen into over the last year 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 and a half of me doing customs um so a lot of this i want to go over with you guys is um from the standpoint of where i was when i started um and i've done you know a little bit of fact finding i did some polls on twitter on facebook to kind of get an idea in the regular transformer collector groups why they someone did or didn't want to do um customs um so the, the big question is, is why not? You know, uh, if you guys are following along, you're on here. Um, obviously, you at least have a little interest in wanting to do customs. <clears throat> so the big thing to tackle is, is why not? You know, what's keeping you from wanting to do customs? Uh, the big, you know, four things I've got are, uh, are, are time, cost, fear, and skill. Those are kind of the big four that's keeping people holding you back, you know, by your coattails. Um, I want to do customizing, but I'm not that good, um, you know, but I don't have a lot of time. People don't have a lot, of, you know, between, you know, work and in gaming and everything else. Um, you know, how do I find time to, you know, do them? Uh, cost, you know, every custom is going to be, you know, coming from a, a base figure. You're either going to build it, print it, or uh, reappropriate, you know, a base figure from something else. Um you know, fear again. If you're if you're taking a thirty dollar toy and ripping it apart to paint it, there's a lot of fear of, of breaking it. You know, uh, cracking the pins on it, or um, you know, painting it uh, wrong and having to paint it again, or just ruining the, the figure. And those are you know common things. And and skill. A lot of people just don't know where to start. That's that's the big the big thing is I don't know where to start. I don't know what you need. Um, out of all those questions time's the big you know uh the big one for everybody but skill is right after that and i think a lot of these are perception um more than i mean time definitely you only have so much time but anybody with new year's resolutions is going to say you know i i want to exercise this year they got you got to make the time um maybe you scale back and watching you know the newest episode of wanda and vision that's what i did yesterday i was working on customs instead of so i'm a, I'm a day behind on the new uh wanda vision show but um it's just making the time and it doesn't take as long as you think it just kind of depends on what you're doing how elaborate you want to do uh, go with it um the why you know what got into it um i kind of pulled some of the people who i've really respected their work um grim Lockamus, and Sam's Forge are two people I've really been, I followed before I even got into customs. Um, and Grim, Grim Lockamus is, you know, I said, what got you into it? And, you know, he said, it's a drive to, you know, he wished he had an answer, like the drive to create or something. But um, he got into it 
similar to the reason why I started getting into it was he didn't want to pay 300 for a botcon waspinator. That's a pretty, you know, easy reason why you wouldn't want to get into it. I'm actually working on um, making a flame war figure because I don't want to go back and try to pay for a botcon flame war, but I want a flame war figure. I have a, I, I like the, the fembot figures. I don't think we have enough official figures of them. Um, Sam's Forge. Um, Sam just actually helped me out with a new uh, piece I'm working on right now, but uh, he liked third party figures, you know, um, and, and he's an engineer by trade. So he looks at the figures and says, I can do a better job than that, you know, and, uh, and he had, you know, big ideas, no CAD skills. And so he just, you know, started coming up with ideas and engineering. Um, follow either of them. Um, Grim Lockhamus does a lot of great shattered glass stuff. Sam's Forge does a lot of amazing um, custom stuff built from scratch. Anybody who followed the Transformers IDW um, Transformers t uh, Terminator, he built an RC from that, you know, an add-on shell for RC to make her, you know, look like that. I mean, it's the engineering is amazing in that. So these are people, you know, who really inspired me on the why. Um, Thwarp, you know, I I talked talk to her and, you know, she got into it. She's doing plastic models since um, a kid. Um, and the detailing and the painting side of it, um, you know, and, and, and fixing things. Something you'll find with doing customs after a while is you get a figure and you won't be happy with it. And that trepidatiousness to fix a figure that um, isn't meeting your standards um, and it goes away um, you know so things like you know like lug nut you know she wanted to style it like like bits blitzwing um, siege sky tread um, you know fully repainted it I just actually uh, repainted a siege sky tread myself for um, Green Lantern I did a Green Lantern with it because you know I wanted to kind of get that figure um, out of that figure. Um, Moggy does an amazing set of uh, little known figures. Um, if you look at his stuff, he's doing a GoBot set right now. So anybody who kind of saw the old GoBot puzzler, you know, combiner, he's slowly building a combiner out of those. So um, each one of these, um, you know, creators all got into it for different reasons, you know, saving money, I can do better engineering. I want to put details on, you know, um, they just aren't doing the figures that I want. Um, there's, there's a lot of different reasons why to get into it. Um, it's just taking the first step. Um, there's a lot of niche, uh, you know, niches, niches, uh, niche, uh, that you call them, um, for this too. Um, you've seen some of our, our previous, we've, we've got artists who get into doing, you know, custom art. You've got, um, people who are doing fanfics for writing. Um, if you're not too handy with doing, you know, actual customs, you can get into digibashing. You can get your ideas out there. Um, you know, all you need is Photoshop or GIMP. Um, there's a lot of free options out there, but, and you can just recolor and rebuild it, you know, um, that way. Um, I've been trying to get into the photography. So, you know, you're buying figures, but you're creating, you know, scenes, dioramas and doing uh, the photography side. Um, and the 3D modeling side is, you know, big for making your own custom pieces. A lot of people are like, you know, Sunstreaker from the Earthrise didn't come with uh, spoilers. And tons of people made new spoilers for him just with 3D modeling. So you don't have to have the engineering chops to build a figure from scratch, but you could have a figure that's missing something, you know. Um, Earthrise, Ironhide, and Ratchet both had terrible back ends with feet. People made new feet, new tires for Hound. Um, you know, uh, Lazy Eyebrow just made a new tire set for a uh, Siege Hound to make him more like a Jeep. So there's, you don't have to model figures. You can get into just pieces and parts, you know. Um, so there's a lot of different um, niches to find what works for you. Um, I like to dabble. So I kind of try to get into a little bit of all of it, for, to be honest with you. Um, for resources, and these are just kind of places that I go to get inspiration to get um, to get help, um, I use Transformers uh, Customs uh, Worldwide on Facebook. It's a fantastic group. There's a lot of subgroups out there. That's probably one of the largest for customs themselves. Um, if you're just on message boards, uh, TFW 2005 
um, has a great message board. They have a call a section called Radicons, um, and that's just everything from you know it's 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 literally um, it's full of everything from all of these different you know niches um, on there. Um, and then YouTube's got tons of great stuff. Um, I'm a big Transformers animated fan. Uh, I just like the you know the uh, the sleek designs, kind of organic designs um, of them. And so I honestly, uh, I follow Bad, Bad Lamprey. Um, he hasn't put anything out for a while, but the way he takes a figure and makes it into, um, you know, a Transformers animated figure that's never been made. Um, he's got a lot of good tips and tricks on how to do stuff. And you can see how his, his mind works with the engineering on that. So, um, but social YouTube and message boards are kind of your big trifecta for, um, you know, where to find all, you know, anything and everything you'd want to know how to do. Um, the tools, um, I kind of put the tools in levels and this is just based on, uh, you know, what I learned how to do. Um, pictured as my Stay Puft Marshmallow Man bulkhead I made um, when I primed him. But I consider there's a, there's, there's, there's different levels of tools out there. The, the main one, uh, the basics is just uh, paint, you know, it's, it's spray paint. It's, it's, uh, it's paint markers. Um, honestly, I buy my stuff at Walmart. I got Walmart spray paint. I got, um, you know, Walmart paint markers for everything I do. I'm, uh, I'm not at a point where I'm using like the Vallejo specialty paints. Um, I've got an airbrush kit from Christmas last year, not last year, the year before that I've been a little trepidatious to touch. Um, because I'd rather make stuff than learn how to do new stuff. And so I need to learn how to do that for some detail work. But um, you don't need expensive high-end stuff to do some of your you know, basic customs. Um, you need a screwdriver and pin punch. Um, and that's just to take the pins out. Um, now, there's a secondary level with that. I'll show you guys later with flat pins and whatnot. Um, epoxy is your friend if you got to glue stuff together, you know, um, or if you break a piece. Uh, epoxy is honestly handy to have around. Takes a little while to set. Um, it's a little stronger than, um, you know, you're going to get with crazy glue. Um, 3D printed parts, if you're not a level where you can get them yourself. Um, Shapeways, I use all the time. A lot of people I mentioned that do 3D work. Um, have stuff up on Shapeways or they have their stuff up on other sites um, that you can actually download. If you have a 3D printer yourself and you don't have the skill to print, uh, to create, but you have the ability to print, which is where I'm at right now, um, you know, you can um, buy the files, print them at home. So uh, 3D printed parts are going to take you a lot farther than just repainting something from scratch for the most part. Um, and patience is one of the basic tools I think everyone needs. Um, I got an eight-year-old and he does not lack this. He does not have this tool in his toolbox, um, but he's getting better as he does customs by himself because he's been wanting to do his own. Um, this is kind of all your basic level one stuff. Um, you know, all this stuff you can go down to Walmart and pick up aside from 3D printed parts. Um, so it's, it's not anything that's too hard to just go down to a local store and pick up. Um, so intermediate stuff, this is kind of the level up stuff. Uh, airbrush kit, like I mentioned before, um, is, is the, the airbrush kit's basically just going to give you a more even paint job. Um, the thing that um, I have heard, and they aren't wrong, is that if I'm not overly careful, uh, spray paint leaves a thicker amount of paint on everything you do. Um, not a problem if you're just making a, a statue, um, but your figures that have a lot of uh, uh, pieces that rub against each other, that's gonna make those joints tighter and that's going to make them rub against each other um, and your paint's gonna rub off. Um, or the parts are gonna get stuck and you won't be able to transform them. Um, so again, it depends what your final product is you wanna do. But um, airbrush kit's going to give you more even paint, and you won't need to use as much. It's a whole new skill set, though. Um, aside from that, a Dremel kit is is super super uh, 
handy to use as well. Um, I have one, I use it for filing pieces down. Um, I use it on the edge of um, when I, since I do have thicker paint, I use it a little bit on the edge of parts that I know are gonna rub because that paint's gonna build up. So I, I sand it down a little bit uh, um, and then I basically paint over it. So um, you don't have as much of a gap, but it'll help with, um, you know, having pieces actually uh, rub against each other. Styrene is a fantastic tool. Um, it comes in all shapes and sizes. It's just that flat, you know, PVC paper in different thicknesses. They have them in cylinders. They have them in, um, you know, uh, like square tubes. Um, I build a lot of head pieces out of that and some other pieces. I did a velocity uh, transformer and she's got these nice little wings that come off the side of her head. And I don't, I, I'm not a level two 3D print stuff, but I can literally build those out of styrene, it's just little flat pieces like cutting out of paper, just layer them and glue them together. Um, I did a flash and I did lightning bolts off the side of his head with that too. So you can do a lot with those. Now, as an intermediate set, um, you do need more patience with these because these are more, um, these are tools that you have to go a little slower with. Uh, these are tools that you're going to need to take a little bit more time to learn how to use correctly. I've got an entire Dremel set. I use like three tools in it. There's a ton of stuff I have to learn how to use. Um, but um, they're well worth it for your, your end project. So your, your level three stuff, this is kind of the advanced, advanced stuff. This is making your own 3D models and printing. Um, now you can print at level one, but I put it level three because not everyone's at a comfort level, usually in level one, if you don't have a 3D printer, um, to go buy one. So I have a $180 3D printer I got for Christmas. So that was my uh, my my better half's uh, present to me this year uh, in support of uh, all of this. So I'm starting to learn how to use that, um, but I didn't get it until you know a year and a half into doing this. Uh, soldering iron is a great tool um, for learning how to do LED kits, um, but also a little bit into pin removal too. Um, it's definitely an advanced skill that you have a higher chance of possibly breaking a figure with. Um, and again, these, even more patience. Patient, you're gonna hear me say patience a, a ton. Um, but that th these are the things that like, when you get to that part, I mean, to put a light kit into like a bumblebee figure like this, and this is a, uh, MP Crafts by Robin. Um, they put light kits in everything. I've seen side swipes with headlights at work. Um, amazing stuff. And they wire it through the body. Um, and so that's using Dremel kits and drills and wiring and soldering. So it's a, um, you know, and then finding where to hide the batteries. Um, some of them just kind of trace the battery pack out the back of the figure and hide it in photos. But it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely an advanced set. Um, the nice thing about all this, honestly, is um, this is um, this is something that you you can learn at your own pace. So you do not need to be uh, the end all be all of doing customs um, whatsoever. Like I said, my son's seven. Uh, you know, actually, you know, he's eight. He's eight, um, but he's been doing it since he was seven. Um, he started after his birthday. Um, he's been spray painting some stuff with me. So he's starting to put out his own his own customs, um, and his are of never care figures that he has seen anywhere. He's just he's he's eight. He likes to make up his own characters. Um, so he's got you know three figures he's made. He's got a Revenge of the Fallen Megatron that uh, he had me pick up that he wants to do new hand sculpts and a head sculpt. So he wants to be level three, but he's at level one right now. Um, but you know you can pace yourself. This is all stuff you can learn and you can apply this to anybody, anything else. If you guys do Gundams, you know, uh, Gundam kits, a lot of overlap in model kits are in customs and it's not something to be terrified of. So the big thing I always ask is what's the spark? You know, what in, inspires you? Um, you know, I asked Grim Lockamus and yeah, you know, he started doing it with the botcon, the botcon, you know, waspinator that he didn't want to pay 300 bucks for, but he 
has a lot of inspiration come from Beast Wars, which is funny considering the New Kingdom set's coming out, um, or well, it's already out in stores. And he's been doing figures, you know, Beast Wars uh, figures, um, you know, for a while. Um, so he's kind of, you know, ahead of the game on that with, with all those. And he does Shattered Glass figures too, which I have a soft spot in my own heart for Shattered Glass. I love Shattered Glass stuff. Um, but that's kind of what inspires him. It's Beast Wars. Um, for me, um, I've got kind of a range of stuff. I, I just capped out at about 86 customs so far. So it's kind of like a little headshot gallery of most of them. But there's a range, you know, of, of what inspires me. And it doesn't have to be the same thing. You can have your own, you know, thing. Pop culture stuff inspires me. So I have a lot of pop culture figures. Um, I love combiners too. So I, I'm sitting at one, two, three, four, probably about four or five combiners right now. Um, and if anybody does follow me online, I have a pension for Ghostbusters Transformers. So I have, I'm doing Ghostbusters Transformer probably in March when the figures come in uh, from AliExpress. So, um, but a lot of it's, you know, what's the, the spark? What inspires you? Uh, I just did a Batman set and then I got inspired to do the rest of the Justice League. So I went through and, you know, hunted around to do kind of a Justice League reformatted. Um, DC threw out a long time ago, there was an idea to do a DC Transformers crossover comic, uh, kind of like they did the Avengers a while back and then it kind of fell flat. Um, but I always kind of had in my head, I wanted to do that. So I spent, you know, a few weeks kind of picking apart, uh, putting them all together. So um, really it's just whatever inspires you to, you know, to do uh, what you're going to do. The, the big, uh, what I consider kind of the, the tent poles of inspiration are uh, existing characters, um, inspired builds, like, a, you know, something that you see that you just, you got to make. Um, original characters, making your own figures up. Um, and then just totally crazy ideas that are for fun. Um, like I got a, a bug in me to take the extra pieces I had for my Batman ones and make little, where is he? There's his head. Little, you know, Batman Optimus Prime. So it's fun. It's a, it's a, a light lift. You know, I got a Bumblebee one floating up here too. But um, just fun, fun stuff. If you're not, um, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Um, for me, I haven't started taking custom orders a whole lot. I've done a few, um, but I don't want to lose that fun factor. Um, I used to do Artist Alley. I used to do 12 years of sitting in Artist Alley doing fan art. Um, and I got kind of tired, tired a little bit of it. And so I wanted to do something that was fun to me creatively that I could learn that I, of, you know, stuff I've never done before. So for this, you know, to me is a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Let's see. Where am I? So for me, uh, existing characters can be pretty much anything. Um, like Grimlockamus mentioned, you know, my first major custom I did was um, was Nautica, because I did not want to pay 120 bucks for a um, Titans Return Nautica that came in, you know, a box set. She's really expensive, and I was like, you know. I'm not a big fan of the mold anyways, so I built my own Nautica. I'm also a big Wreckers fan and I wanted a good Wreck Iron Fist figure, so I made that. Um, I love the IDW, you know, uh, Alex Mil Milne's like um, designs. I absolutely adore them. Um, and the, so I made a, a velocity very similar in um, kind of an homage to his designs he used for the Transformers um, Terminator like Forshi series. Um, but there's a lot of figures that no matter how much I beg online to get made and are no brainers, they don't make like glyph and tap out. Um, I've been waiting for a, a repaint of Bumble cliff jumper forever to make those. And so I went ahead and made my own. So existing characters are, are great because um, as you've seen in the artist alley, there's a lot of different takes on it. Them, you can do IDW, you can do, um, you know, you can pick from like the Energon series, you can pick from the G1 series. So there's a lot of um, bandwidth you have to work with for existing characters for anything you want to make, um, because there's just a lot out there. You just Google search and then pull from there and you're good to go. Let me see if the, there we go. Um, 
So for me, for, you know, I, like I said, I do a lot of Ghostbusters Transformers myself. So I literally got inspired by the IDW um, Ghostbusters Transformers, you know, set that came out with uh, Ectotron. And I decided I wanted to make, a, you know, his own team. So I made an A-Squad. And uh, then I was like, I need to stay puff Marshmallow Man. So I made that. And then I needed a, a Gozer and some Terror Dogs. Um, obviously, this kind of speaks to my Ghostbusters hobby a lot, too. But I kind of like the team colors, red and white, some blacks and grays for everybody. Um, and then I decided I need a B, a B squad. So I made a Slimer to go with it. And I made a whole B team as well. So these are just, you know, I mean, they're not existing characters, but I was really inspired by the stuff Dan Schoening and Eric Burnham put together when it comes to the Ghostbuster Transformer stuff. Um, like I said, I've got I've got two more. I've got a I, I got one successfully named. I got another one. I got to figure out the name for him. But I'm doing a combiner um, when the figures come in. So I'm doing one last hurrah because uh, everybody's been bugging me to do a combiner set. So I'm doing a combiner set later this month. But it's it's all based on inspiration. I mean, 100%. Um, I have done some original ideas too. I I like Dungeons and Dragons. If you notice, I like a lot of stuff. Uh, it's a lot of, I have a lot of nostalgia kind of packed into me. Um, but a lot of uh, Transformers didn't have a lot of uh, melee weapons. Melee, melee. Um, so I wanted to do an entire set that um, is kind of nerdy. Uh, you know, quick backstory is they crashed into a, you know, strip mall, into a local gaming shop. Um, you know, they're all historians. Um, and kind of have their own different background, but for the most part, they all use um, melee weapons, and they all have special class. I already built, you know, uh, backstories and classes for everybody. Um, but when I was coloring them, I kind of wanted to go with a Voltron, you know, um, color scheme. So their combined, you know, mode. Uh, I call them the Dragon Riders because as I was building the Ghostbuster figures, I took the heads from a uh, Sinner Twin and ended up cutting the head off. So I had extra heads floating around. So I put them on the front of their bike modes. Um, so I had these nice, you know, dragon motorcycles. Um, but I kind of went with a Voltron um, kind of theme form called Grand Paladin, you know, where the entire theme of the combined mode, even the feet and the hands is off of Voltron. So I kind of tried to pack a lot of nostalgia in it, but I kind of tried to build a reason why. Um, so the big advice, um, no matter which way you go, I've gotten from the beginners, um, you know, Grimlock and Miss is, you know, don't be discouraged. Um, you know, if your first piece doesn't come up, you know, come out right or something is wrong, um, you know, don't beat yourself up on it. Again, it's practice. Um, you know, uh, Clutter Desk is a, does some amazing customs too. And I've, you know, been following him forever and, you know, and his is just start small. You know, um, he turned a Titan to return uh, Bumblebee into Cliff Jumper, and that's just red paint. Um, I just did another one myself uh, for that final unnamed Ghostbuster Titan Titan's return uh, Bumblebee. I took my first custom I ever did was um, just buying a neck adapter for the Generations Nightbeat, and so I could put the head on. You know, from the from the Titan's return. Uh, um, figure that came out a little little uh, little one so i just so i could put that head on my second custom was turning titan's return road rash into cliff jumper by buying a little head online painting it and popping it on done um so you don't need to start big you can do something small and fun um for it sam says the same thing you know uh start with a smaller project and give it a go um <laughs> keep that 14 bot combiner you want to make in mind, but start with something uh, simpler and faster. Um, because he's right, you'll you'll the you'll go faster the more the 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 more the more you work on it. So I have a Ninja Turtle combiner I did, um, and by the time I got to that one, I literally was doing all four limbs at the same time with different colors of paints. But I got to an assembly line, you know, kind of motif with it where I could work on everything, um, kind of all at once. Um, so yeah, just try, 
the worst you can do is try. You can pick up toys over at like Dollar Dollar General and repaint those. You know, they cost you a buck, maybe five bucks, and you can start small with those and work your way up. So um, for process, since I said I was going to talk about, you know, kind of the way um, I do this, um, I kind of broke it down to the six P's just because I like to be clever. But um, six P's I'm going to go over real quick are a uh, plan, pins and screws, parts, primers and paint, patience, um, and put back together. Um, those pretty much cover any kind of project you're working on. Um, plan's the big one. Um, you know, you got to pick what you want to do as a custom. Um, that's an easy part. Once you have an idea and light bulb goes off, um, that's the easy part. Planning how to do it is the harder part. Um, like for me, um, I saw this version of, of Rummage online um, by Kei Zama. Uh, she posted it up on Twitter, but I also was reading the comics and I absolutely loved Rummage because like I said, I, I like the Fembot figures. I don't think we have enough of them. So, you know, the first thing you got to figure out is what are you going to use as a base figure? If you're not going to print it, you're not going to build it, you're just starting out, what can you use to make that figure you want? Um, what color paints are you going to need? And are you going to need any third-party accessories? Do you, are you going to need extra weapons, uh, a new head? You'd be surprised if you go on Shapeways. Um, the amount of heads that are already out there, just because it says uh, a Huffer, you know, IDW Huffer head, does not mean you have to use it for an IDW Huffer. I've used that head on two different customs. Um, I've used a, an IDW Wind Charger head on two customs too. Um, your paint application on that's going to make a big difference in how it looks. But um, the, the that's a lot of the planning is what you got to figure out beforehand. I absolutely say jump in and just grab a figure and start painting if you want to learn how to paint. But if you're doing a project, um, planning is is the big part of it. Uh, pins, pins, screws, and parts. Um, the, the big part about prepping stuff is taking apart the figures. Um, but that starts with having the right tools, screwdrivers, pliers, pin punch. It's a whole lot easier to paint figures if you take them apart. It's not easier to take them apart. But it's a lot easier to paint them if you take them apart first. Um, I, myself, when I'm doing stuff, as silly as it sounds, I have uh, one of these, which is just a baking tray. And I literally lay out the head and the top and then the arms and legs for all the pins and where they go in it. And then I put the parts in it too. Um, I mean, it's a muffin tray. It's easy. Uh, some people put tape out and number stuff, or they take a photo and they number pins as they go out. Whatever works for you. Um, I've gotten to a point, depending upon how often I've done the same base figure, um, I don't need to sort them. I know what everything goes to. I've used the Power of the Primes Retgar base 16 times um, for my combiners and my customs. So that said, I know where pretty much all the parts go by now. Um, so I don't need to use it again. The same thing goes with the RC uh, generation, uh, Transformers Prime RC Generations Chromia. I've used that about six times. So I've got a good idea. So you'll get a feel for it as you, you go through, um, but it's always good to keep track uh, of it. Um, I always say keep a reference photo up to um, online of the figures in both modes. Cause if you got to put it back together, you got to figure out how to, how they all fit together. Uh, the bottom thing on here is uh, the pins. Um, if anybody, if you look at your toys, you're going to have an option of either a, a straight pin. So it's a pin on both sides, or you're going to have a flathead pin like you see in this tire here. Um, that's called a cap pin. Um, there's, there's two tricks to pins in general. One, if you remove a pin, the, it's just a flat little pin, but one edge is scored all the way around. So when they pop it in, it doesn't just pop out. It kind of has some grab to it inside the plastic. So the key is figuring out which end uh, to hammer uh, up from. So that scored end is the one that pops out. Otherwise, you got to try to hammer the scored end all the way through the plastic. It's not going to work for you. The flat head cap pins are not something I... I try to tape things up, mask them, and get around them. Um, 
the trick to those, and you'll see if you ever Google it, um, that's actually where I pull this picture from, is the YouTube link at the bottom, which um, this presentation will be available to everybody after the fact in case you want to jump onto links. Um, they use a soldering iron and they heat up the pin and then they use a, like an earth magnet, a really strong one. And right after it's hot enough, they pull the pin out because that um, scored area is generally on the very end um, of it. So they, they pop that in and you can't get it back out. So um, cap pins are something you got to be careful with. There's a high level of breakage if you're not careful with them. Uh, primer pates and patience. Um, and this is just, you know, the basics. And I've, I've gone over some of these, you know, before. Um, I use Rust-Oleum and Krylon paints for primers. Um, they're Walmart brand. They're 2X. They have the paint and the primer built into it at once. Um, when you go to airbrushing, definitely you can airbrush with a primer first and then airbrush a paint over top of those because those are much thinner. But if you're doing a spray can, um, you're going to get too thick if you try to put primer on first and then you try to put a color paint over it and sometimes the chemicals between the two don't like to mix and you'll get kind of a mess um, with it but uh, sand down your corners that are going to rub a little bit so that you know you can layer that painter up on them uh, prime all your pieces evenly uh, I tend to uh, lay all my stuff uh, outside down first so if you see in this picture um, this is a, a, a one of the Rekar Power of the Primes. I I flipped everything over so the innards and the side you don't normally see, I painted that first so that when I paint it, the outside that you do see, I flip it over. So in case there's sticking or paint buildup, I can rub it off, but it's inside of the toy. So when you put it back together, you don't have to worry about it a whole lot. Um, if you can't take pieces apart because of, uh, you know, cap pins and stuff, um, like tires, um, you can use some um, artist's tape or masking tape. I recommend frog tape. It's green. Um, you can mask that whole area off, just tape it all up. And when you paint, it's not going to touch it. And you just pull it off and you get your tires that are fine. Um, the big thing is just to let it completely dry. Paint likes to pick up fingerprints. It'll feel dry, but paint likes to pick up uh, fingerprints a lot. Um, putting it all back together so you know when you're done. So once it's all primed, um, check out the joints. Paints, paint tends to make areas of movement less flexible. So those are the areas that you've got to be really careful. Joints, knees, elbows. Um, I recommend masking off ball joints because if you put paint on them and you pop them in the socket, the paint's going to wear off when you move the arms around anyways. Um, so I recommend just masking it off and leaving it. Um, when you get to the point where you can airbrush, you can usually put a nice light layer on that or kind of sand out the ball joint, but then you might have wobbly arms and legs if you do that. Um, but yeah, transform back and forth when you're done. You may have touch-up areas you have to work with. Um, and then when you're done, all that's left is, you know, some photography if you want to, if you want to show off your work. I mean, that's, that's the basics uh, process. Um, going back to the photography side is what I call the, the silent P which is posting um if you join you know if you're on youtube if you're on twitter sharing your work um posting your work is the best way to get feedback um i i don't like to drop the word toxic with transformer fandom but we do have that darker side of our fandom but i will tell you the custom fandom is the most supportive nicest um, creative group or subgroup of transformers I've ever been a part of. And I'm a cranky old G1 or 40 plus year old, you know, dad. Um, but it's honestly, I've made some real friends doing this and I've really learned a lot. And I've, it's, you know, you get a lot of great critique back. You know, you can do a custom that somebody else has done and they're going to be like, oh, I didn't do that. And how'd you do that? And no, I didn't think about that. You know, and where'd you get the weapon from? Oh, you know, I 3D printed it. So there's, the community is the best part about it. Um, and it's where you can get, you know, critiques, learn new tricks, ask questions, um, but you can't do any of that if you don't post it. So that's kind of the silent P because when you're done with all the work, you still got to kind of do a, you know, traipse it around and show everybody it. Um, I have this list put together. I'm not going to go through it crazy, um, but this is some of the Facebook custom groups, um, some of the Facebook general groups that are not custom oriented. 
Um, and then some of the message boards you can jump on that have custom areas. And then, you know, for social media, you can follow hashtags. Um, I follow customer companies and creators both. There's a lot of great third party companies out there putting out some great stuff. And there's a lot of creators putting out equally, if not better stuff. Um, Reddit's got a Transformers, um, you know, subreddit on there. Um, Imgur is where I host a lot of stuff. And there's a lot of opportunity there to like look at stuff. Um, and then Discord, you know, uh, we've got it here. There's a lot of, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of, you know, different channels you can jump on for that too. These are great places to learn stuff, but also for the silent P posting stuff. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, keep an eye on this link if um, right here. It's, uh, it's case sensitive. So it's, you know, bit.ly, switcraft in caps, um, at is lowercase, and then icon is in caps. Um, you can grab this entire presentation. So I've got credit to anybody I grabbed pictures from that weren't me, um, but I've also got credit to anybody I linked to, you know, uh, for um, any other, you know, channels and stuff. So that's about it in a nutshell. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, the first question you got was if there is a cust uh, ser Discord server, sorry, um, a Discord server just for making customs. You know, I haven't found one. Um, I just got into Discord in the last two or three months, and I was using it primarily for gaming stuff. But um, I talked to like the Transformers Addicts group, and we built a custom uh, channel in like the Transformers Addicts group. Um, there's a lot of them going around. I'm working on finding more, but um, what I've been reading from people in comments on Twitter, there are they are out there. It's just finding them. So. I'm going to give you a, I'm not in many of them, but I'm looking to join more of them because I want to have a live conversation more than a message board conversation. Uh, next question you got is uh, what exactly got you into making customs in the first place? So there's the, the, the long answer and the short answer. Um, the, the long answer is uh, I have a, a background in, gra in design. So I did, like I said, I did comic conventions for about 10 or 12 years. Um, I had years where I was doing dozens of conventions. Um, but the it's a two-sided answer. One, I've got a new two-year-old, so I had to back off on doing shows. But also, um, I do t-shirt design a lot too, and it just got tiresome to constantly be the first person to put out a mashup design between, you know, this popular thing from a trailer and this other popular thing that's, you know, out. like. Um, you can only do so many Rick and Morty mashup designs. Um, but I have t-shirts I did on Shirt Punch and T-Fury and Ripped Apparel. Um, and it was fun, but I wasn't getting as much, I, I found it was becoming work. So um, as my son was getting more into Transformers, I got back into Transformers again. Um, way hard, more hardcore than I did when I was a kid. Because um, I had this wallet accessibility I didn't have as a child. Um, but there's figures I, I, I wanted that weren't out. Um, and there's things I wanted to make that weren't out. You know, I have a, I have a evil dead army of darkness, you know, uh, the classic I made a transformer of there's not enough Dr Jurassic park transformers. I wanted a, a Jeep. I, you know, I wanted a, a blue. Um, so there's just a lot of figures I wanted that just weren't out there. Um, and so as a traditional artist, uh, and a digital artist, I wanted to learn new skills that I, I couldn't get, you know, doing what I was doing. So I got into it because there's there's so many different things you can do with it. Um, and it's it's a constant learning process. So it's, it's great because, you know, I love to learn and it gave me a reason to learn stuff that at the end of the day, I don't have a picture on a piece of paper or a digital printout or, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm wearing one of my own t-shirts. I'm, I'm that guy I'm going to a concert in my own, with my own band shirt on. But, um, I had something tangible at the end of the day that I could touch, fee, feel, see, show off, and you know, um, and get a little bit of enjoyment out of it. So that's my short, really long answer. Cool. Um, we have two more questions. One of them a little shorter, so we'll do the short one first. Um, where do you go about buying pins for the joints? I have a salvage bag of beat up broken toys. So honestly, um, 
there's some online you can buy, but even them, you're going to have to cut because the pins come in all different sizes. So I managed to get from somebody a bag of broken, beat up Megatrons, Bumblebees, and Optimus Primes from all sorts of series. So um, the pins you're really going to need if you're doing styrene and 3D, 3D printed stuff um, when you get to that point. But um, before that, the pins all come in the figures. You just tap them out and you know put them back in. But I use old toys, toss away toys. You buy a lot of busted figures, you can pull pins out of the newer stuff and use those. Cool. So the last question is, uh, if I can find it, there we go. Um, is there something in particular that you look for when you're selecting a base figure to work from when creating a different character? Okay. That's a good question. Um, there's two sides to it. It depends if I'm doing, um, this generally comes when I'm doing like a, a custom figure that's not a, a existing figure. Um, that's an inspired theme. I decide if I want to go with a bot mode that looks close to what I want, or if I want to do a um, vehicle mode that's close to what I want, if that makes sense. I've got to, let me do a stand up real quick here. Um, Cause this is one I struggled with. So um, this is a good example. So I did a Superman. I was struggling to figure out what I wanted to do with him because I wanted something that had that Superman look to the body, but I was really picky with the alt mode too, because I wanted something that, you know, um, was a good fit for Superman itself. So I just wanted something that flied, um, you know, that flew um, in general, but I didn't want like a jet or a seeker. So for instance, this one, I picked Scourge because he's got the nice little wings on the back you know, that it's kind of cape-like, but also he's got these really nice, big kind of chunky boots that, you know, really kind of um, sell the figure. So decide what you want to do if you want to, if you're focusing on a vehicle or if you're focusing on a, um, on the body. Aquaman, I was, I had to find something that was fish-like, manta ray or a shark. So I used um, hammer bite because he's got a nice hammerhead shark body. So for him, I focused on the body, um, but it really kind of just depends. Figure out what your focus is first and pick based on that. That's it. You can find me online on uh, at squidcraft.com or well, actually, yeah, at squidcraft.com, but also um, that's my handle on Instagram, Twitter, and everything else. So feel free to reach out. If you have any questions, I'll answer them online. Uh, and feel free to grab a copy of this whenever you need. Thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it. It's fun talking about this stuff.